Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the random web series where we find and test the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, by popular demand, we're tackling low carb cheesecake. Stay tuned. All right, so uh, low carb cheesecake. Now, uh, this is gonna be a little bit of a um, disappointment perhaps, but cheesecake is not my favorite dessert at all. Um, I don't dislike it, but I don't think that in 43 years I have ever ordered a cheesecake as my dessert at a restaurant. Uh, it just, there are so many other options that I would have rather had. I'd go for the chocolate cake or the ice cream or the Boston cream pie or something like that besides a cheesecake. It just wasn't my cup of tea. But apparently it is your cup of tea because hundreds of you literally have asked me to do a low carb cheesecake battle. So that's what we're doing today. And we're going to mix it up a little bit because uh, I'm not doing just a plain cheesecake. That boo so boring to me personally. So what I've done is searched for a couple of recipes for berry cheesecake, mixing some fresh berries or some frozen berries in to this. Now also, I have been dying to try on camera one of um, uh, a recipe by Headbangers Kitchen. Uh, his stuff is amazing, Sahil over at, at the Headbangers Kitchen. So um, I just have never gotten around to putting one of his recipes in a battle. So we're doing that today because if you have seen this recipe online and the photos of it, holy macaroni, it looks so good. So headbangerskitchen.com, um, it's the Keto Berry Swirl Cheesecake. And um, Sahil, if you don't mind, I'm gonna throw a picture up here of what yours looks like from your website because this is what caught my attention. I mean, oh gosh, that looks good. So the other side of this battle is going to be the Mixed Berry Keto Cheesecake and that is by certainlyketo.com. Now, if you're new to this channel, this is what we do here. We pit recipes against one another and test them and decide who's got the best uh, version of whatever we're making. But because of that, I often don't list exact measurements. You who have been here for a while know that, um, and you're probably tired of hearing me say it, but it bears repeating. These are not my recipes. We are just here to test them today. So if you'll look at the bottom of the screen down here, you'll see uh, links to all the recipes as we make them. And then also in the video description below, click expand, show more. There's an arrow down below this video with lots of text and information about this video. And there will be links to everything we're testing here today. So please click those, go check out these channels, Headbangers Kitchen, certainly keto.com. These are two great recipe source resources and uh, we're gonna pit, um, pit them against each other today for a berry swirl cheesecake. So let's get started. As uh, Actually, as Sahil would say, enough jibber jabber. <laughs> let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so before we begin actually assembling these cheesecakes, the recipes are actually fairly easy. I mean, the, the one good thing about cheesecake is there's not a lot of ingredients, right? I mean, there's cream cheese and uh, so a, little, a few flavorings and, and some eggs, and that's really about it, you know, in making a crust. So we're gonna make the crusts together so that I can hopefully get them both in the oven at the same time, just for efficiency's sake. But before we do, we need to begin with the Headbangers Kitchen recipe because he makes a puree of his berries. And this is, uh, I believe he calls for 200 grams of fresh berries, and these are uh, blackberries. Uh, I think that's what he recommended using if they were fresh, but really, honestly, any mixed berry would work. So what you do is just puree these in a blender, toss these in. We are going to make a puree out of this and then boil this down, run it through a sieve to get rid of the, the fiber and the, and the seeds. And then we're gonna uh, just boil this down to make a jam. Let's do it. Okay, so now we just need to get this stuff out of here. Hold on. And we are gonna run it through a sieve. Come off there. Let me ditch the blade. It will be so much easier without the blade in there. That's what I love about that Ninja Blender. You can get the blade out to do things like this. So you're not fighting the blade with your spatula trying to get everything out and then missing half of it. This was in my favorite things video for Christmas, uh, this Ninja Pro Blender. So I'm gonna put a link down below if you're interested in it. All right, ooh, I bet that's good. Okay, now you just really gotta work this through. It'll take a bit to get through a spine mesh sieve, but what this is gonna do is leave all the seeds. If you've eaten blackberries, you know you'll be picking seeds out your teeth from now to Christmas. 
Um, so this just eliminates all of that and makes a beautiful, smooth, creamy uh, texture that's gonna go along in that cream cheese. Now, as you can see, that is a lot of fiber, seeds, skins. So we're just gonna dump that out. And now let me hook up my induction burner and we'll be back and we're gonna cook this down while we make our crusts. Be right back. So on a, a medium heat, we are just going to um, cook this down just to get it to a thicker uh, jam consistency so that we can mix it with our cream cheese and, and cheesecake mixture. He also adds to this uh, some sweetener and a little pinch of salt just to sort of bump up the flavors there of all these berries. So add that. This is a granulated uh, sweetener I used to swerve. Uh, the granulated is fine if you're going to be cooking it because the granules actually have time to break down and they're not crunchy like sometimes the baked goods are. So we're just gonna let this work. And I'll meet you right back here in a bit. Okay, so we have reduced this down quite a bit now and I'm just gonna um, take this out. The reason we did this first is this stuff's gotta cool before we can make the filling and I just needed to do this first so that it can be chilling while we're working on uh, crust and fillings for the other, for the cheesecakes. So in this goes, I'm gonna put it in something that we're gonna reserve. Um, you'll see why in a minute. So this yummy stuff's gonna go on the back uh, of the kitchen over here and just be cooling uh, and just waiting on us, okay? So now we're gonna turn our attention to the crust. And the crust is very easy. It's almond flour and a little bit of uh, sweetener <clears throat> um, I used to swerve. And then this is not in his physical written recipe, but it is in the description of the recipe uh, to add a little bit of cinnamon to the crust. Not much. If you want to find out how much, check his recipe down below. Uh, but it just sort of gives the flavor of graham crackers to, you know, what could possibly be a graham cracker crust. So even though you think cinnamon doesn't belong with berries in a cheesecake, it does sort of lend itself to feel like a, you know, like a, a graham cracker crust. So obviously, I say it every time, sift kids, <laughs> sift your flour. This is almond flour. Look at how lumpy it gets. You would never get that out with a whisk or a fork or you just gotta run it through a sieve. There ain't no way around it. Especially if you store it in the freezer like I do. It's very important that also um, both recipes uh, mentioned this, I believe, but Sahil was very adamant about it. All of the ingredients, particularly for the filling, have to be at room temperature. Uh, the eggs, the cream cheese, the mascarpone cheese, the, all the things we're gonna be adding to it needs to be at room temperature to prevent the cracking uh, that you often see in cheesecakes. So we've been, I've had these, the, all the other ingredients sitting out for three or four hours already, getting, uh, getting ready for this, for this recipe review. We're doing this crust first because uh, this one bakes at a lower temperature than the other crust. And I wanna get both of the crusts made because um, even though the crusts bake at different temperatures, the filling and the full cake, they both bake at 325. So they can both go into the oven at the same time and we'll hopefully can take them out at the same time. So this is a, um, <clears throat> an eight inch uh, cheesecake tin, parchment on the bottom, lots of butter to grease that because you will never get it out of there if you don't. Make sure all that's incorporated and stir in your melted butter. And it goes into this and you can use your fingers or um, a uh, spoon, something to just flatten it out and get it into a thin crust. I'm gonna use my fingers. He says you can bake this in a water bath, a bain-marie, um, although to, that helps prevent the, the cracking. Although <clears throat> in his video and in the recipe photos, he, he admitted that he did not. He just baked them dry on the oven pan, so that's what I'm gonna do. I think it did better without the spoon. It's sticking to the spoon. Get out of here. All right, this goes in uh, the oven at 350, I believe. Yep, 
350 for uh, 10 minutes comes out and it has to cool before we continue. So we're gonna put this in and then I'm coming right back and we're gonna work on the other crust, all right? So now we're back to do the CertainlyKeto.com crust. Uh, the Headbangers Kitchen's crust is in the oven now and in the 10 minutes it takes, we can certainly quickly assemble this. Just like our other one, we are going to sift. She uses a combination of almond flour and um, coconut flour, so it's two. Uh, I'm also going to say that um, her recipe requires or requests that you place this in uh, an 8 by 11 cake pan. I don't have an 8 by 11. I've got a 9 by 13, but I felt like that was going to be too thin. I mean, you know, it was going to be spreading it too, uh, too thin, so I didn't want to use that. So what I've done is I've used... A, the, the other pan was an eight inch pan, a uh, spring form pan. This is a 10 inch spring form pan. So this might come out a little bit thicker uh, than hers in an eight and a half by, or in an eight by 11 pan, but I just couldn't find one of those locally. And I wanted to, you know, make sure we at least attempted to do it correctly. So certainly keto.com, uh, I hope this is okay. We gonna find out. Do exactly what we did. We just need to whisk this and get this, um, get this whisked. I mean, get this uh, sifted. Why can I not think today? Hello. To this, we are also gonna add some sweetener. She called for powdered uh, erythritol sweetener. I used Swerve Confectioners. And she also adds the little bit of um, cinnamon to hers. Hers was written in the recipe. Other than the coconut flour, these are essentially the same thing. Uh, this one did not have salt in it, however, like Sahil's did. And just like the other one, we are going to mix in some Melted butter, this is a whole stick of butter in this one. If you wanna know the other ingredient amounts, like I said, just visit their website. You can print out their recipes and make them just as easily as I have here. But it's not fair, it wouldn't be fair for me to list all the ingredients and steal traffic away from their site because they're the ones who did this stuff. So, might be easier with a spatula. And then this one cooks at a much higher temperature. This one cooks at 425. So when the Headbangers Kitchen Crust comes out, we're gonna crank that oven up to 425. As Soon as it's preheated, we will throw this in for 10 minutes. And then I'll meet you back here with both of our crusts ready to go. And we're gonna start making filling. Now we're gonna uh, turn to the filling uh, for both of these. Um, this is the filling for uh, Headbangers Kitchen. As you can see, we've got the, our beautiful jammy uh, blackberry puree here. Um, he calls for 200 grams of mascarpone cheese. This container is a little bit more than 200. And then some very soft, pre-softened uh, cream cheese. Uh, he calls for a full block of that, eight ounces, 226 grams. So in these go, whisk these. Uh, he uses an electric mixer, uh, but he also gives the caveat not to over mix it because it will cause the cheesecake to crack. You're just wanting to get the lumps out of it and get it smooth without building a whole lot of air, I think is the goal here. Okay, now here is the unusual thing about this recipe. He does not give you an amount of sweetener to use. He says use sweetener to taste. Uh, and I guess there's so many, oh Lord. There's so many, um, you know, we all have a, an idea of what we think a cheesecake, how sweet it should be. You know, I've had a lot of cheesecakes that don't have a lot of sweetener in it. And honestly, it's kind of like just biting into a block of cream cheese. I'm gonna start, this is confectioner's um, swerve. I think it'll blend in easier. Um, I'm gonna start with two tablespoons of this and we're gonna see where that gets us and we just don't have to keep testing it. It's probably gonna take more than that. The other recipe calls for a half a cup plus two tablespoons of, of swirp. Let's go ahead and do three, because I know we're gonna need more than that. You're just gonna have to test it yourself and see what you like, okay? So let's get mixing. Before we add the raw eggs, I'm gonna taste this and see what, what I think about this, the sweetness level. So I'm gonna add two more tablespoons. So to this, we're going to add uh, the juice of a lemon and we mix this up and he, I've noticed that he adds an ingredient, mixes, adds another ingredient, mixes. So I'm following the recipe exactly as written. Okay, so and the next thing we add to this is uh, just a little bit of vanilla extract. 
give this one good final mix and you'll see what we're gonna do next. So we've got our cream cheese uh, filling mixture here. This is where we're gonna add half of it to our berry mixture. So we wanna sort of make a berry flavored filling. So that's about half roughly. And this is how we're gonna make our berry swirl. So I'm gonna, let's use this, huh? Might as well. I mean, come on and look at how beautiful that is. The color of that is amazing. It reminds me of the um, blackberry sherbet that I made. Sherbet, sherbet, sherbet that I made. I'll leave a link to that up here. Um, it was a great recipe. Okay, here's our cooked and cooled pie crust. And we just, he said, just make alternating dollops in the center of it. And he piled them up right in the middle so that it sort of gave it a chance to marble. Hopefully I'm doing this correctly. So he'll don't make fun of me if I ain't doing it right. Knock this down. And there is our keto berry swirl. This he says goes um, in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes. The other one says to bake it 10 to 15 minutes. There's a big discrepancy there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the oven, but I'm gonna watch both of them pretty carefully. You want them centered to jiggle, but the outside to be set. And then they've got to cool overnight. So, boo. All right, so this is going in the oven. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're about to make the filling for the CertainlyKeto.com recipe. Again, the link is gonna be down here or in the video description below. Uh, it's basically the same exact thing. She does add some more sweetener to hers, but she uses, instead of our mascarpone cheese, she uses two uh, blocks of um, cream cheese, full fat cream cheese. Again, these have been softening for hours. And she also adds sour cream to this, just a half a cup of sour cream. And as you see, I'm just using the same dirty bowl. <laughs> I mean, there was, you know, there's very little in it from the other recipe that's gonna be affecting much of anything. We are just going to whip these two together and get them combined. We're going to add a little bit of lemon juice, both of the eggs in, and she does not specifically say to add them one at a time, she just does add them. So that's what we're doing. Again, probably wise to crack this over a bowl. As you can see, I'm about to brush this one right now. Darn. There's a shell. Get that shell out. This is why, there, got it. That's why you shouldn't do that. Don't ever. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Hold on. To this, we're going to add the sweetener, and boy, she does have a fair amount of sweetener in it. So if you want to find out, um, you can go down there. This is, again, powdered. Uh, swerve, confectioner swerve. She specifically calls for confectioners or powdered erythritol. Get out of that bowl. Carefully combine all of this without throwing it across the kitchen. Okay, so this is our uh, cooled and cooked crust. It got a little dark around the edges. Uh, 425 is awfully high to bake a crust at, but <laughs> It, uh, she obviously knows what she's doing. And this is where instead of making a keto, I mean, instead of making a berry swirl and, 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 um, and all of that, we use fresh berries. Cup and a half of fresh berries and I'm gonna use blackberries and, I mean, sorry, blueberries and raspberries in this. And you just leave them whole. I just wanna make sure I'm not getting too many because obviously this is some of the carbier things. That's one cup and there's our half cup. So spread these evenly over the bottom of the, the tin. She says you can use uh, frozen for this, but um, I bet fresh is gonna be a little bit better. We're gonna find out. In this goes, pouring right on top of it. Now, th her recipe says to bake this for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, Headbanger's Kitchen recipe says to bake it for 40 minutes. Now, if you remember, like I said, this was designed, she said, or her recipe says to make it in an eight by 11 uh, ca uh, pie cake pan. I, I don't have that. Might be thicker than it should have been, so we're just gonna have to watch it. You want that center to be jiggly? You're just kinda gonna spread this out so that all the berries are covered. I bet this is gonna be good, it looks beautiful. Lightly tamp it down. 
in the oven this goes alongside our other one at 325. Like I said, just gonna be checking the temperatures and making sure we're not burning anything or taking anything out too soon. These are gonna cool on a wire rack and then they have to go in the fridge minimum four hours, both of them say. I think one says three hours, the other one says four, but both of them say preferably overnight. You'll probably see my sleepy head in the morning um, and we're gonna pull these out of the fridge and we'll taste them then. So uh, I'll see you in five, four, three, two. This ain't the Food Network and I don't have two of these uh, cheesecakes sitting and waiting like, oh, we just made these. It really is the next day. Look at these cheesecakes. I mean, hello, these are gorgeous. Now I haven't cut them and I haven't released them from their spring forms yet. Uh, I always put a little bit of, if I do anything in a spring form, as you see, I put a little um, uh, uh, aluminum foil underneath just because sometimes things weep and seep. The Certainly Keto Cheesecake, it cracked a bit. You know, it did a lot of cracking here. And I'm just gonna let you know, her recipe, obviously, like we mentioned a few times, was supposed to be in an eight by 11 pan, and I didn't have that, so I did it in a 10 inch spring form pan. So it was a little thicker probably than her recipe called for. She asked to bake it to 15 to 20 minutes. This took 35, almost 40 minutes. This one took 30. Uh, about 35 minutes, but he, he, that was built into the recipe that that would cook for a while. And most cheesecakes that I've made or have been around, it takes a little while to cook. So these have been cooling. And now um, whoo, let's pray together that I can release these from these spring forms and taste them and see what it's all about. Now let's go ahead and just mention these, um, the details to this. This is Headbangers Kitchen. Uh, this is his uh, Keto Berry Swirl. Again, check the links below. All the recipes are down below. And his per serving, it makes eight servings out of this. This is an eight inch spring form pan. Makes eight servings. Uh, per serving, it's 301 calories. You've got five grams of net carbs. Total carbs is eight. You got three grams of fiber. Uh, five net carbs. Uh, fat, you've got 258 grams of fat. Sahil, I think that might be wrong, my friend. I'm gonna check that. Uh, 258 sounds like the whole recipe, so maybe that's a typo on his behalf. Uh, I'll let you know if that is not correct. I'll place the real fat grams up here on the screen. And uh, protein is seven grams. Now, in comparison, the mixed berry cheesecake, uh, again, supposed to be an 11, 8 by 11. This is in a 10 inch spring form pan. This makes 12 servings. It also is five net carbs, okay? So per piece of 12, one of the 12 servings per slice will be 233 calories. You've got uh, 20 grams of fat, eight total carbs. You got three of fiber, leaving you five net carbs. And protein is five grams of protein. So both five net carbs per serving. This is probably gonna give us a little bit more per serving. I don't, I'm not sure we're gonna find out. So now oh, let's try to get these out of this pan. <laughs> All right, I'm sweating about it already because it makes me nervous. This is what I don't like about reveals on television because <laughs> what if it sucked? So, um, because this is a nonstick span, I'm, pan, I'm gonna use a little cheap plastic knife and just kind of go around the edge because I don't want, oh, I'm messing that up already. Oh God, look at there. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I should just pop it loose, right? Y'all. Ooh, ooh. Okay, hold on. That's premature tasting, premature tasting. I'm just gonna do it. I would normally run something around that. Should I do it with this? Yeah, I'm gonna do it with that. I just don't want to release this thing and the next thing you know, every bit of it stuck to the spring form. Guess why I don't like cheesecakes. Just make a damn pie in a pie pan. Uh, I'm making a mess of this, y'all. How not to make cheesecakes with highfalutin low carb. Welcome to my show. Let's just release it. Drum roll. <laughs> So there, it does want to stick over here just a little bit. I'm just going to kind of be gentle with it and, and then get off there. Okay, lift, lift and separate, lift and separate. It doesn't look so bad. It doesn't look so bad. Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to take it off of the aluminum furl. And I did have a piece of parchment in the bottom of this, so remember that. Y'all, that's pretty. 
that looks good. Look at the sides. You see how tall it is. I mean, compared to my, that's nice and thick. Got a pretty crust on it. If I were going to present this, I obviously would move it to a, you know, a, a, a display plate of some sort. So the only thing I can do is cut into this. Now, a lot of people will soak their knife in uh, warm water to get a real clean cut. And between each cut, clean your knife off, soak it a little bit more. Um, I did get some cracking here, as we discussed. So, da, 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 da. there is some resistance. And I'm supposed to get 12 pieces out of this. So really, it's not going to be that big. And see, that's why you would cut, wipe your, wipe your um, knife off so you don't, you know, just for beauty's sake. Hold on, I'm gonna do that. So, get off of there. Ugh, I can already tell you that it tastes doggone good. And I should have a pie server, but I don't. Okay. Y'all, that is beautiful. I don't know if you can see. Remember, this is the one with the whole fresh berries in it. Focus on that, not my big fat head. Focus on that. Look there. Oh, wow. I have to hide my face because the camera. <sighs> okay. We're going to set it aside. Release this other one. Now, this is what spurred me to... <clears throat> Despite all the requests for a cheesecake battle, what really spurred me to do this was the picture... <laughs> Pictures of Zaheel's Headbangers Kitchen's um, photo of this cheesecake. Now, mine doesn't have as much <coughs> um, swirling to it. I think I put too much, uh, when you halved the mixture to make your purple, I think I put too much in the purple and I got too much purple, but it's still freaking beautiful. So I'm just gonna be brave on this one and we're gonna just release the spring form and <laughs> again, drum roll, silent prayer. This is, oh yeah, yes, yes, come free, come free. Gosh, this one turned out great too. Okay, so here is Headbangers Kitchen. This is beautiful, holy smokes. That thing is beautiful. Look how thick and gorgeous it is. Now we get eight servings out of this and let's just cut us a piece so that we can see what this is about. I just love the color of this. I really, really do. It is beautiful. I might have been a little generous with these slices. I'm not sure. Cut them out of there. Get off the paper. Get off the paper. All right. Okay. Also, freaking beautiful. Look at that. I gotta hide my face again so we can see it. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. And now, all there is left to do is taste it. All right, so we're gonna start first. Let's start with the Certainly Keto. This is the one with the fresh berries. And um, it's beautiful. It looks a little bit more like a traditional cheesecake just because it doesn't have the, the swirled color. Mm-hmm. That is so good. You know, sometimes I can detect swerve or erythritol. When you use the powdered and you're using it in a baked good like this with a lot of creamy things, it's hard to deny that that, I mean, I, I, I don't think somebody not I don't think a regular person who's not eating keto would not think that that's sugar. I, I don't believe that. I think that they would think it's sugar. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. I mean, it's gonna be hard to beat that. Gonna be hard to beat that. Okay, let's do the next one. All right, this is Headbangers Kitchen. I gotta say, this is beautiful. It just is intriguing looking. You're like, why is that purple and what's in there? Um, so this is where like, if I were serving that, I'd put a single berry probably on top of both of these, just so you know, kind of know what's in them. A big fresh blackberry on the top of this slice of, 
be great. It is beautiful, nice crust. Wow, 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 wow. You know, this had a lot less sweetener in it. Mm. Those are some, those are both fantastic. I'm not declaring a winner. Those are both winners. Holy smokes. Those are some of the most convincing keto desserts I've tried. Uh, the certainly keto has a lot more sugar in it, not sugar, but a lot more sweetener in it. That was like a half a cup plus two tablespoons, if I remember correctly, for the uh, erythritol. And this was just sweetened to your taste. So I think I put three tablespoons in there. I'll have to look back at the video and see, because that was yesterday. Um, and I kind of like that that is not as sweet. I, y'all, I could, I'm go. This is gonna be hard not to just devour both of these. Both of them are better probably than the real thing. You know, a lot of cheesecakes just taste like you're brightening to a block of cream cheese and neither of these do that for me. I do like the fresh berries in this one. It really kind of gives you a little bit of a juice bite, you know, something like that. But you could honestly put a fresh berry or two on top of this one. This is just such a presentation that I could not, I mean, I couldn't not make it. So there you have it folks. <laughs> Low carb cheesecake is apparently super easy to do because it just banged out two of them that I would be glad to serve anybody. Um, those are amazing. You would be hard pressed to send this out to somebody on the street and have them taste it and think it's a diet or a low carb or a low calorie dessert. I, nobody would believe that. Those taste like two fantastic cheesecakes. Fantastic. So there you go. It's a tie, straight up tie. You both did great, certainly keto. Um, Headbangers Kitchen, you both did fantastic. Five net carbs each. Um, go make one, y'all. Go, I'm serious, go make one. As somebody who doesn't even like cheesecake a tremendous amount, I mean, I don't dislike it, but as somebody who it's not my preference, I'm gonna tear these down. <laughs> so there you go. You know, I say it every time, uh, looking in the end of this camera keeps me honest. These videos are a way for me to maintain my low carb way of eating. So I really appreciate that you've come along for the journey. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. This is what we do here. If you're not a subscriber, this is what we do here. We take two or three um, low carb and keto recipes, pit them against one another, do a taste test and determine who's the winner. Um, kind of saves everybody some money uh, and I do the hard work for you. <laughs> Um, if you uh, haven't checked out my Patreon account, be sure to. Uh, it's patreon.com slash highfalutin low carb. I'll leave the link down below. There's a lot of extra stuff there. It's sort of like the tip jar for the internet. It lets people like you who appreciate what people like me are doing here on YouTube. And you can donate a couple of three, four bucks a month to help keep the train on the tracks. But you in return get a lot of special benefits. You get PDFs of all my original recipes. There's some behind the scenes footage. Uh, Q&A answers, lots of different things that you as a patron would get. But otherwise, these videos will always stay free right here on YouTube. And uh, I will see you in the next couple of weeks with another battle. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.